Hi, I'm Jeff Dykhouse for HowAudio.com, and today we're going to do a how to get a good voiceover sound tutorial. It's kind of a tutorial and kind of a demonstration because I think there's a lot to be learned from just seeing different methods and listening to the result and saying, yeah, that's the one for me. I'm not a voiceover guy, but you've heard my voice enough times if you've been watching How Audio videos, you should be able to uh, learn a lot from the way these different mic mics and mic techniques pick me up. So, here we go. In front of me, I've got a collection of some of the most popular microphones for recording a voiceover. I've got um, Neumann U87, which is a classic for FM radio kind of vocal sound. I've got a uh, Sennheiser shotgun microphone, which is used on a lot of like action movie trailers for the big explosion kind of things going on in the background. You have this voice that just cuts over the top. A lot of those guys use that Sennheiser uh, 416 shotgun. This one's not a 416, but it's another Sennheiser shotgun. And then we've got a uh, Sennheiser 421, which represents the dynamic mic family, like a EVRE20 or a uh, Shure SM7 or more microphones that would be used like an AM radio announcer kind of sound. This one's got the big spit mid on it because you need to get real close to those to get that sound. And then we've got two newcomers to the, to the fray here. We've got a Rode Podcaster which is the um, Australian mic. It's got a USB output. You talk right in the front of it and it uh, gets you an announcer kind of voice coming out USB. And then we also have an MXL009 USB microphone, which is their uh, high-end USB uh, condenser microphone, similar to the U87 in construction. So it's a large diaphragm condenser. It should give us that FM radio kind of sound. Unfortunately, USB microphones, at least at this point in time, in my world, which is on the Mac, can't record more than one USB interface in the same software at the same time. You can, if you had you know, multiple M-Audio Ultratracks or something, you can make an aggregate device and have lots of different USB interfaces all combined to make one giant 24-channel interface, for example. But with USB mics, that doesn't seem to work. So you plug in a USB mic, and that's your only input to that software at that time. If you're recording stuff one at a time, like a voiceover, that's no problem. If we were using one of these as a kick drum mic and we need to get a snare drum mic in the same software at the same time, that could be trouble. So to make this happen, we have Pro Tools HD running in the other room, which is picking up the Neumann and the Sennheisers. And then we have a Mac laptop here picking up the Rode Podcaster. And we have another Mac laptop running Reaper picking up the MXL mic. So I'm going to bring all these files together in Pro Tools and we'll audition them there. You'll hear that. But for now, for those of you questioning how this is happening, that's how it's happening. All right, so I'm going to read a little bit here and then we'll compare the different sounds. Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's listen to these microphones and see how they sound. First, I want to tell you how they're hooked up. The Sennheiser 421 is hooked up through, uh, it's plugged into a Neve Original 1272 mic amp racked by Desert Island Audio, which is a real cool piece, straight into a DigiDesign 192 interface to Pro Tools. The shotgun mic is a Sennheiser ME66 with a K6 amplifier into a Millennia HV3D amplifier. The Neumann U87 is also going into the Millennia amplifier. The MXL009 is going into a computer through its USB interface. There's no other mic preamp or electronics necessary there. You plug straight in. And the Rode Podcaster is the same. It's going into the, uh, going straight into the computer through its USB connection. All these Different waveforms here are matched. I level match them both using phase nulling and playing them over the speakers and playing them over headphones. So that's as close as I could get them. Here we go. Let's take a listen, starting with the Sennheiser 421. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Next, the Sennheiser shotgun. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Neumann U87 The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. MXL 009 The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Road Podcaster The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Wow, some of those are really similar and some of them are very different. I'd say the Rode Podcaster definitely has that um, filtered low end and high end. It's, it's focused on the mid range. There's not a lot of bass in that thing. And 421 sounds a little that way. To be fair to both of those, those mics seem to respond well to really getting your lips right up on the grill. And um, that adds more low end to each of those. But they still have a I'm on AM radio kind of tone to them. The other mics uh, all sound very similar, smooth condenser microphones that sound good a few inches away. Uh, the shotgun mic, I really like the sound of that. That might be my favorite. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. With the exception of, it sure picks up a lot of little mouth noises, and I have that problem. I always have little, you know, high frequency, you know, pops and things that go on, and the uh, Sennheiser 421 that I usually use doesn't seem to pick up much of those, but the shotgun mic really picks them up, maybe more than any of the other mics. You can hear that on this second phrase. There's a little mouth noise. Let's hear it. I shall not want. We'll hear that same phrase on the 421. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. And then U87. I shall not want. U87 picks it up a little. Shotgun a lot. I shall not want. 421. I shall not want. Much less. Podcaster. I shall not want. There's just a click to the podcaster. The 009. I shall not want. Yeah. You know, it's definitely, the 009 is a deeper voicing of a microphone, and it moves the subwoofers here in the studio. But it's got some high end there. It was picking up some of that little stuff. I shall not want. He Interesting. Um, you just got to kind of pick your battles here, what sort of tone you like, and how much sensitivity. If it wasn't for those mouth noises, the shotgun mic would be my favorite. We also should listen to them with some processing, since... The most important thing in getting your sound is, you know, your announcer, the voice itself. And the second most important thing, in my opinion, is choosing the right microphone, finding the perfect working distance, you know, using a pop screen or whatever you have to do to get rid of any extraneous noises. And then some kind of processing is almost always used on a voiceover to get that compressed in your face sound. So let's look at processing next. A lot of times when you hear some voiceovers, they've got some kind of processing on them. And if you go on the internet and you type in how to get a good voiceover sound, there's a lot of talking about normalizing and brick wall limiters and all that kind of stuff. I know for me, doing a lot of um, audio post work, I'm not too happy when I get over-processed voiceovers, especially if something I'm working on is not that processed, and then you get this over-processed voiceover and it either forces me to process everything else as much really squeezing the life out of everything else so it sounds just right there. Or um, it just sounds bad and doesn't match, which doesn't make the announcer look good, you know. And if you're a voiceover person looking to do this yourself, my advice is under underdo it instead of overdoing it because uh, someone can always add more, but they can't take away. So having said that, let's hear how these different microphones sound once they're processed. And the processing I'm talking about is um, <clears throat> three things. We're going to do some EQ. There's some P popping going on in this operation. So I'm going to go and grab an EQ and I might use this um, uh, Sony Oxford EQ and maybe put um, 18 dB per octave and bring that thing up to about uh, 40 hertz. Too much more than that, and if you have a nice, you know, deep, full voice, you'll start to take some low end out of the voice. Now, if you have too much low end and you're using the EQ as a tool, that's one thing. But if you like the tone and just want to take the pops and rumble out, then I would stick around here somewhere. So that's our first thing we're going to do. I'm doing this on the master fader, so it'll, it will affect all mics equally. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a compressor and um, maybe the Waves Renaissance compressor. That's one I think sounds good for voiceovers. 
And this guy even has some nice little presets. There's one for a voiceover. Pull that up. And then finally, you could normalize to get the level of your um, voiceover to be as loud as it could be without distorting, or you could do a little, just tiny bit of peak limiting, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to pull up a peak limiter plugin like this um, Waves L2 plugin. There's the Waves L2. So let's um, go ahead. I'm going to take, take this output ceiling here and slide that down a few point threes, and then we'll just dial in a tiniest bit of um, limiting here on our L2 limiter. You'll hear that really bring up the level of the voiceover. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me. You can see how the attenuation meter, the amount of compression or limiting, is just tickling at the loudest part of my voiceover. That's what I want. I don't want that thing buried all the time. You know, that needle just jumping around. That can make you sound like you're on the radio, but that leaves people downstream from you nowhere to go. So if this is the final step in producing your product and you like how that sounds, hey, more, tower, more power to you. But if you're adding this ingredient to a video or for broadcast, I would not be slamming that thing quite yet. All right, our first, our other plug, plugins in the chain, we have our low roll off, and that's just reducing the lowest of bass rumble, so we don't need to audition that. Then this compressor, I use that just to kind of level the lower and higher parts of the voiceover. And the same thing is with the limiter. I just want to see some tickling of the meter there. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And the process of reducing volume, that's what this gain reduction meter is showing us here. Reducing the loud parts means the overall volume's gone down a bit. So most compressors have a gain slider. You can see uh, our title on compressors at howaudio.com to learn a lot more about this process. But in general, I'm going to boost up this output gain slider here about as much as I see on average on the gain reduction meter. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. So that when I bypass the compressor, it, the volume is the same. Here we go without compressor. He leads me beside the still water. With compressor. He leads me beside the still waters. And, you know, might be a tad too much even. When I'm loud, I want to be loud. He leads me beside the still waters. Here's bypassed. He leads me beside the still waters. It just adds a little, an element of fatness and in your faceness to the audio. That's good. Um, so let's go back and double check our limiter and make sure that our compressor settings didn't change the limiting settings. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. In fact, I can turn up the volume a little more. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. That's nice. So now let's hear the microphones, each microphone through a typical processing chain like the one we just cooked up right here. Um, so you just heard the 421. How about the shotgun? He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. U87. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. 009. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Podcaster. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Now the podcaster kind of had that I'm on the radio sound to it already. So going through this extra processing is not flattering to it, I don't think. It's making it sound even smaller. Um, the 421, though, really responded to that processing. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. So other than the limiter... Let's bypass the first two and hear the 421 raw. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. So that just sounds like me, and I don't like that. Here's me through processing. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yeah, it just sounds a little more famous, and I like it. Shotgun. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Shotgun without processing. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yeah. Processing is not as flattering. He leads me beside the still wall. Oh, that's why. Something about the tone of the shotgun is really triggering the compressor too much. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And now I'm going to like it. Just when, you know, you get up, up above 6 dB of gain reduction, only the very best compressors sound good at those kind of settings. Your average compressor is just going to start hurting the sound at that point. So now let's compare with and without. He leads me beside the still waters. 
And here's without. He leads me beside the still waters. I think I like that. He leads me beside the still waters. He and then I'll put game probably needs to come down a little bit too. All right, next one, U87. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Compressor out. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. U87 sounds pretty famous without any processing. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And interestingly, those of you who might have headphones on, the U87, it gets a little bit noisy. You can hear some background hiss when you're, you know, gain reducing or bringing up the gain as much as we have thanks to compression. Bringing those peaks down forces us to bring the gain up, and that brings the noise floor up. This is a 60s U87 that's not known. You know, U87s after where it's a U87A or AI uh, are quieter than the old U87s. The 1960s U87s were noisy mics, and you can hear it. I'll play it one more time. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me. You can, there's something back there. All right, on to the MXL, a modern microphone with modern electronics, USB output. Let's hear it. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yeah, that sounds pretty famous. The low end is so much on that, I might want to try something. What if, for me, we just go up here and reduce some low end, maybe 2.5 dB of everything from 325 on down. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me beside the still waters. It was a little too much, maybe 1.5 dB. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Let's bypass both of the processors. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores. Yeah, I think with that little bit of, you know, super gentle EQ, there's not much going on there. You see a lot of people with this kind of thing going on, and that. He leads me beside. That can't be good. <laughs> so. If you buy expensive gear, you usually don't need to screw it up with major adjustments. You just make the tiniest adjustments just to get in back, figure out what's making it out of balance and fix that one little thing. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yeah. For my voice and these headphones, that sounds good. All right, let's get rid of that EQ and go back to, now let's listen to the podcaster. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And let's... um. Let's ditch the processing. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He I don't know. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Compressor only? He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yeah, as long as we're not too aggressive with the processing, we really don't need a low roll off on that mic because it's already rolled off. Um, I'm okay with that. I don't know if there's much we can do to increase the low end. Let's try it. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yeah, so here's no EQ. He leads me beside the still And here's some low end boost. He leads me beside the still waters. But it's still not as smooth as something like the, um, the 009 here. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. But depends what you want. Going for that old time radio show, you know, thing with maybe hi-fi music and you want your voice lo-fi so that the music sounds even bigger when it comes in, the roadie might be the, might be the ticket. Anyhow, that's how I usually advise people to set up their um, voiceover chains. Obviously, if you can get away with no processing at all, that is the best. If you need to do a little bit, I know like if you want to submit um, your voiceover to some of the voiceover websites, um, they have settings they suggest for you to, you know, make your voice competitive with the others. And I think as long as you're using that limiter on the output and you're tickling the meter a little bit with that thing, you're going to be competitive with anyone else as far as levels. Um, and then if you don't over-process, you're going to sound more natural and believable than those. And that's a big part of voiceovers is believing what it is that you're saying. So I would say don't, uh, don't smash it unless you really, really want to. But enough uh, political preaching for me. You've seen the process. I hope you enjoyed some this uh, process and you've learned something. Check out our other videos at howaudio.com.